Okay, so now we can look at some batteries. So batteries are basically little electrochemical cells. Um, and there's a bunch of different types that, that, that we have we come in contact with on a, on a daily basis. Um, lead acid batteries, these are like your standard car battery, um, unless you have a hybrid. But if you have an old school car like me, you have a lead acid battery in there. Uh, it's a 12 volt battery. And if you look at the half reactions here, lead acid, there's lead in there. And then it's also sitting like in an acidic medium, um, an electrolyte there. And so here's your cathode, here's your anode. I'm, I don't expect you to memorize them. I just want to get, get you like the, I want you to get the main points out of, you know, what are the advantages or disadvantages of each type of battery. Um, so if you look at the, you know, the E cell, the cell potential between the anode and the cathode, it's only two volts, but car batteries are 12 volts. So what you do is basically just put six of these little uh, cells together to get the, um, the 12 volt car battery. Uh, advantage of a lead acid battery um, is that they are, it's rechargeable. So um, it, it is rechargeable. It's actually charging itself while your car is running. So if your car has ever, your battery died and then you got somebody to jump it for you, you're supposed to let it run for a while. And that's the recharging, but you're supposed to let the car run for a while. If you don't let it do that, if you don't listen to your husband and you drive to Target, uh, you will, <laughs> it will, it will die on you again. Um, if, if it's not fully, if, if it doesn't recharge enough. So while you're driving it, it recharges. So that's an advantage of the lead acid battery. Um, opposite of that, alkaline batteries. Alkaline means base, right? So now you have a base battery. These are the ones that you like, those little double A batteries um, that you kind of throw away. You're not really supposed to, but you do. Um, these are disposable. They're non-rechargeable. Um, the you you might have like a AAA one in your in your calculator if you have a if you don't use the rechargeable ones. Um, so basic, you know, they have a, they're in a basic medium. So you have KOH. That's your that's your base there. There's your anode and your cathode. Um, yeah, these are the non non-rechargeable ones. So that's kind of a disadvantage of of these, but they're pretty cheap. Nickel cadmium, um, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion batteries. So the first generation of like rechargeable batteries were these uh, nickel cadmium batteries, NICAD batteries. Um, they and I, so I remember my first my first rechargeable. I think it was in the my camera or something that I had. And you had to charge it in, in the wall. <laughs> and the advantage of these things they're uh, lightweight and, and rechargeable. Um, disadvantages: cadmium is like a toxic heavy metal. A lot, none of these batteries are like good to throw away. There's always some crap in there that you really don't want getting into the environment. Um, but cadmium is, is particularly uh, not cool. So it's a toxic heavy metal. So they kind of replaced these NICAD batteries with other ones. So now we use a lot of lithium ion batteries. Everything has a lithium ion battery, your cell phone, your, um, your laptop, even if you have an electric plug-in car or some hybrid cars, they all have these lithium ion batteries. Um, so they really have replaced all these other you know, crappy batteries. But the first generations were um, the nickel cadmium. And obviously the benefit was that these were, these were rechargeable. You can only recharge them so many times. Eventually they just, they don't hold their charge anymore and they, they kind of die. Um, but yeah, so cadmium was a toxic heavy metal. Uh, nickel metal hydrides, they, they replaced some of the metals with um, the cadmium with other metals that were less toxic. First generation of hybrid cars, like, well, I don't even know how many years ago, they had the nickel metal hydride. Um, now they're kind of moving more into lithium ion batteries. So lithium ion batteries, advantages of the of them, they're, they have very high energy density, which means you get a lot of energy, but it doesn't weigh a lot. Lithium if, is, is really light. So if you think about where lithium is in the periodic table, Oh, of course, this one doesn't really show it. Ah, lithium is all the way over. Oh dear. Well, that didn't work, but lithium's all the way um, near the top of the periodic table, so it's it's pretty light. It doesn't really weigh a lot. So that's kind of our go-to uh, rechargeable battery now. They're everywhere. Um, some other battery type things that the book talks about, um, hydrogen fuel cells and like solar energy. Um, so this is a cool video on the Tesla Powerwall. I'm not trying to sell you on Tesla or anything, but um, one of the biggest problems with like solar energy was that it would work fine. You can, you can use the solar panels during the day, but there's no way to like store the energy. And so Tesla kind of created this, this power wall and it was a, a way to kind of store the energy that you get out of um, these solar power, uh, solar panels and things like that. So you can watch that video. I put a link to it on e-learning as well. And these are other links to um, different hydrogen fuel cell technology that you can kind of watch, but 
We could talk about it in class. Uh, we can move on to corrosion. Corrosion is unwanted redox reactions. So these are oxidation re reduction reactions that you don't really want to happen. So if you have, um, if you ever see rust, like things rust, oh yeah, if you have iron there and you have water and exposed to air, you'll form some rust. So this can happen on your car. If you leave gardening tools out, actually gardening tools are kind of cool. So you can actually see, you'll see like a little pitting in one area. That's where it was like covered by water. And then you'll see like a pile of rust kind of a little bit further away from it and that's where it was exposed is like the edge of the water droplet but then it's exposed to air um, so in this picture you can see iron is being oxidized going from solid iron to iron two plus um, and then you can form iron oxide over here and that's what the the rust is so you need this water and this is kind of where the, the electrons are transferring through there the iron is, is moving through the water but you need the oxygen to um, needs to be exposed to oxygen as well in order for the rust to form. So there's a couple ways that you can prevent um, sort of rusting. You can, you can prevent uh, unwanted oxidation. If you just paint the surface with like anything with like paint, <laughs> it'll exclude the oxygen in the air and then you won't have the um, the oxidation. Eventually that paint will chip and then the oxygen will get through and then you can get oxidation. So the, if you think of, um, it was in San Francisco a couple of months ago, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge and it is painted. <laughs> you paint it um, so that it, it will not rust. Uh, you could also coat the surface with uh, a thin layer of any other metal. And the same idea, then that metal will, will start to break down before it hits the metal that, you, that you're trying to protect. So that's really called cathodic protection. You use a sacrificial anode. This sounds very like apocalypto. It's a sacrificial anode. It's going to sacrifice itself uh, to prevent the oxidation of the cathode, which is what you're trying to protect. And this is how you can protect um, pipes. Uh, ships use this too. And so basically instead of, you know, because you don't want your pipes to rust, so you, you bury your pipe and then next to it, and you attach these little like chunks of a sacrificial anode. So this might be like magnesium. Um, and so the magnesium will uh, will undergo the, uh, it will serve as the anode. Uh, it, it'll be oxidized instead of the pipe. And so every time um, to prevent the, you know, the, the oxidation of this, um, of the pipe, all you have to do then is just change out these little things of magnesium. So you just have to dig up the, the magnesium little chunks next to the pipe instead of having to replace the pipe every single time. So this is actually a technique that's used. It's called cathodic pr protection via sacrificial anode. Um, and that's one way that you can prevent unwanted oxidation.